Hello everyone and welcome to another Glassnode market analysis video where we're going to be looking at a really interesting tool that we've just released that is designed to help identify extremes in the Bitcoin market. This is one of these holy grails that everybody's always looking for, the market tops and the market bottoms. And of course there are tools that you can look at individually or in combination to try and identify those. What this tool has really been designed to do is bring all of that confluence together. And it's quite similar to the uh, the confluence that we looked at in our previous product that was like this. Uh, you may have seen that was trying to recover from a Bitcoin bear, looking for when adoption is picking up and profitability is returning across different sectors of the Bitcoin market using on-chain data. So what we're doing here is bringing that same concept of confluence, multiple components of the Bitcoin market, and trying to bring them all together to identify where we are at an extreme level and a bit of a methodology behind that. So when we're looking at on-chain data, of course, what it's really doing is describing investor behavior. You hear me talking about this all the time, but even within that investor behavior, there's different categories that we typically look at. You'll hear me talk about on-chain activity, profit and loss, lifespan. There's a whole suite of powerful tools that we can use to really assess what is going on under the surface. So what this tool has been designed to do is really, as you can see in the orange, trying to find periods of time where the market is quite overheated. And we're seeing many of the behavior patterns showing up that typically describe a market cycle top. And likewise in the blue, we're looking for those investor behavior patterns where we've got all of the opposite events. Do we have those uh, characteristics that really describe that more bearish, deep bear market sentiment? So what we're going to do is actually combine four very popular but largely underutilized models and a little bit of statistical tooling to just add that extra confidence to what we're doing and then bring it together into a single uh, confluent product. So what we're looking at here is four different metrics, and you've probably heard of all of these before, and any of you who are using a Glassnode account, by the way, this entire thing is available for all of our Glassnode Advanced members. Um, you can start a free trial if you want to test out this one as well as uh, the recovering from a Bitcoin bear dashboard, which is kind of showing two different elements. And these two dashboards actually speak to each other because if we're seeing that we've got these market extremes, particularly the uh, you know cycle low type behavior, then we can move on and look at the recovering from a Bitcoin bear. So we see, do we have the behaviors that we typically see at the bottom of a bear market? And then are we seeing that recovery back out the other side, adoption, growing, profitability and the like. So the four tools that we look at is the MVRV ratio, which we will touch on a little bit in more detail because that's kind of the, um, the crux of it. And we actually have a series of dashboards to help explain that for both Bitcoin and Ethereum. We'll look at SOPA, Pure Multiple, and the Reserve Risk. And these four objects are trying to look at four completely different parts of the market. For MVRV ratio, we're tracking the unrealized profit and loss. What are the paper gains or paper losses held by the space? SOPA is looking at the realized profit and loss, how much are people actually locking in with their spending patterns. The pure multiple is tracking minor revenues relative to their yearly baseline. And the reserve risk is a lifespan based metric where it's capturing how much coin, how many coin days are actually being accumulated by the market. So it's tracking that hodlers and the lifespan component. So when we put all these together, we're looking for confluence across unrealized profit and loss, realized profit and loss, minor revenues, and the coin day destruction, coin day creation type behavior with the hodlers and lifespan. So without further ado, let's get into it. Please do let me know in the comments if you enjoy this type of content. Um, this is a new concept and a new idea and a way to kind of display and really distill all of the on-chain data that we have into tools that are just that little bit easier for people to grasp, a bit more of a visual tool. Um, so as I mentioned, you will be able to access all of this with a Glassnode Advanced account, so please do check that out. And just before we get started, we are actually hosting a webinar for the MVRV ratio. So we'll touch on that MVRV dashboard to start, but a much, much deeper dive is coming in a webinar, which you'll also find in the link below. Right, let's get started. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is our Mastering the MVRV Ratio Dashboard, which again, you will find this in the link below. Um, there is a full report and we will be diving into this in the webinar that is upcoming, but I just wanna to touch on this particular dashboard, which you'll find under Bitcoin, Profit and Loss, Mastering the MVRV Ratio. You will actually also find an equivalent version for Ethereum, so you can look at it across both of the two major assets. 
Now, the reason that I want to touch on this is it's a bit of a methodology, which we're going to redeploy and use across all of those four oscillators that we just looked at. So I really want to touch on that particular concept. So what we look at here is for the MVRV ratio, we can see that it cycles between tops and bottoms, as do all of the four metrics that we look at in this study. And you can see that down the bottom here, you know, we can draw these horizontal lines and say, this is what it looks like at an extreme. But how do we know that those levels are going to stick around long term? As we can see, MVRV peaks in particular are getting lower and lower over time. As volatility comes out of the market, Bitcoin gets larger. The future is also just uncertain. There's less confidence in what's going to happen long term. So drawing horizontal lines on a chart, it's okay, but it's not perfect. Now, in this study, we do show you a methodology looking at how many days below or above that particular level. So for example, for this red curve here, if it's only spent 10% of all days higher than that level, then when you see MVRV at that level, it's probably an unlikely scenario to stay there because there's a 90% chance it wants to be lower than that. Likewise, for the low levels, when you have very, very low levels and there's less than 15% of all trading days that have ever been below that level, if you believe in mean reversion, then you can expect that there's a higher probability that things want to go in the other direction. So that's the initial framework. We're looking at how many days above or below a certain level do we actually see this, this event taking place. Now, the challenge with just drawing a horizontal line is that the market may change. We just simply don't know what the future may hold. Bitcoin cycles may start to evolve and, and you know, it, it's a little bit variable and quite frankly, it's arbitrary. We can try to make it a little bit superior by using percentages and the like, but we could also use statistics. So on this model here, the blue curve is the all time moving average for MVRV. And as you can see, it typically sits pretty much smack bang in the middle of it. We can see that most deep bear markets trade substantially below it. Most um, raging bull markets trade substantially above it. It kind of, it does sit in the middle. It's the all time average. So if any of you who are familiar with statistics, you can then look at the standard deviation, which is basically a measure about how far away from that mean have we stretched on a statistical standpoint. So for this model, all we've done is add minus one standard deviation and plus one standard deviation. And you can see that this here is now a more mobile and fluid curve, but it's going to evolve and adapt as MVRV adapts. So as the market starts to evolve and over time, we have a bit more reliance that at the very least, we're looking at a statistical deviation. We're looking at something that's a bit more robust than just a horizontal level, which in many ways, it's kind of finger in the air, hoping that it stays the same. So now that we have this framework, we can actually start to identify levels where you have above that um, mean plus one standard deviation and these blue zones where it's mean minus one standard deviation. We're looking for these extremes based on a statistical model rather than just kind of finger in the air horizontal lines. Now, as you can imagine, we can run this same analysis and this same study for several different metrics. It takes a little bit of work for some of them to make sure that they're in the right format and they truly are oscillators and also that they make sense. But that's really what we've tried to do with our newest dashboard that's just launched. So this thing here is trying to stitch together that same framework that we just looked at with MVRV. Let's apply that same concept to those four different sectors, MVRV, ASOPA, pure multiple and reserve risk. And let's see if we can then combine how many of those signals are actually telling us we're at an extreme to the upside or an extreme to the downside. So you will find this dashboard, as I mentioned, this is available for all of our advanced members, which you can start a free trial. You'll find a link in the description below. You will find this one underneath our signals and then under the Bitcoin on-chain. And here's our recovering from a Bitcoin bear that we covered back in January, um, which really is the, the, the dashboard that would follow one of these blue events, right? You see these large scale capitulation events. We see investor behavior that looks like a bottom. And then we start to look at, do we actually see recovery and adoption out the other side? So you can start looking at these things in sequence. Now, what we're going to look at here, the way that this signal is constructed, it's what I'm going to call a binary signal. What I care about is, is MVRV above, meaning one, or below, negative one, those extreme deviation bands, plus or minus one standard deviation. 
What about ASOPA? Is that plus one or minus one? If it's if it's not above, it's, just, it's kind of in the middle and it's inside that kind of main deviation band, then it's just going to return zero. I don't care about what's happening there. We're looking for these large extensions to the upside and the downside. So that's what these colored bars are showing. It's showing us in the green is MVRV above an extreme or at negative one, which means it's below an extreme. We can see that we've got our ASOPA here, which is that realized profit and loss in yellow. Blue is then capturing our mining revenue, pure multiple, and reserve risk is that hodling behavior that's going on. And then the black trace that you can see over the top here is then taking the seven day moving average, exponential moving average of those four results. So basically we're looking at how many of the four signals are actually firing off at any one point in time. If all four of them are firing off for seven days, then the signal will return a value of one. As, and it will start to decay and move around as those different uh, binary signals fire off. So if we actually look at this in the big picture, what we're gonna do is just do a snapshot and then we'll go through each of those individual indicators. I wanna give a bit more bones to this so you understand why we look at it from this perspective. But as you can see, it's really picking up the very, very overheated market tops. You can see that it picked up both of these 2013 peaks and you can also see down near the lows. It is picking up periods in time where investor behavior, mining behavior, lots of these elements are showing us that we have similar, similar behavior patterns that are outside that statistical deviation. So just to give a bit of confluence, right? So let's, let's talk about what the actual investor behaviors are because it's all well and good to look at an oscillator and say, oh, look, it's at a high level or a low level. But what does it mean? What does it actually tell us about investor behavior? And this is really where on-chain data, um, at least in my view, is, uh, is quite special. It is showing us the behavior patterns of everyone who's transacting on chain, or in the instance of reserve risk, for example, not transacting on chain, same as MVRV, because coins that people still hold is telling us a signal. They are choosing to spend it, or they're choosing to not spend it. All of these decisions are what's showing up in this on-chain data. So let's think about a meteoric, euphoric bull Every man and his dog is, you know, seeing the market just go higher. Um, what are the typical behaviors that we see at those all-time highs, at the most heated bull market segments? Well, the MVRV is telling us that the market holds significant unrealized profits. Everybody's got a very green portfolio. We're all sitting very happy saying, this is wonderful. I'm just going to sit here and let it go. But remember, there's a point in time when every investor sees enough green, they go, ooh. I like that price, to be honest. I mean, I like Bitcoin, but I also like that price. So at some point in time, getting to a level of unrealized profit becomes unsustainable because people just get too excited and eventually they sell. A SOPA is the result of that. Are coins that are being spent realizing large profits? The longer that someone's held and the earlier that they acquired these coins, if people are buying at the bottom of the previous bear, they've got guts. They are the people who stepped in at the bottom of the bear and believed in Bitcoin when nobody else did. If they're the ones selling, you're getting a view of the smarter money. You're either seeing when ASOPA is at a higher level, you're seeing that everybody is who's spending is getting large. They're locking in large profits. All the people who are holding the largest profits are dominating the spending, which is typically the smart money. The pure multiple. This is modeling minor revenue relative to the previous year. Miners are the production side. And if you think about mining 900 BTC at a current price of 23,000, well, imagine if price went to a million, it's still 900 coins. But the amount of capital that's required to absorb those 900 coins is substantially larger at higher prices. And especially if the market has run very quickly, the incentive for miners to actually distribute those coins and you know take that money and pay back shareholders and reinvest, all of those things start to kick up. And conversely, with sorry, and with uh, reserve risk, and all of this is said and done, the amount of hodling that's going on is reaching an all-time low. Reserve risk is a inverse indicator, meaning it will trend higher when there's very little hodling, and it will trend much lower when hodling is dominating. So at the market peak, everybody's holding significant unrealized profits. The people who have the largest profits are actually starting to sell, which also means that those hodlers who are typically the ones with those large profits, the smart money is starting to distribute. They're seeing that Bitcoin is expensive, and miners, the cost of product or their production is currently extraordinarily profitable, especially relative to the last year. All of these things at the top 
create confluence of distribution. They create a sense of coins being flushed back out into the market. Now, what's happening at the bottom of a bear, at the absolute pits of a bear market? Well, it's the exact opposite. People are holding significant unrealized losses. And the only people who are going to weather through that pain and see that red and still not spend are the people who are going to be reflected in the reserve risk where they are essentially holding this thing. They are acquiring these coins despite all the bad headlines and despite the red candles. Those people who are spending are the ones who literally bought the top. This is what capitulations are. They are a flush out of entities. And the last one is at the pure multiple. What we just went through is we saw that miners, the hash ribbon start to invert, miners start to capitulate, and they're typically selling coins at the extremes, either very, very profitable bulls or typically in distress at the bottom of bears into an already damaged and vulnerable market. So that's really what these four indicators are trying to model, or they do model individually, but the goal here is to stitch them all together. Now, down here, you'll find the individual signals, right? So for MV Arva, you will see points in time when it, it itself is breaking above that band. And you can see that ASOP, for example, that realized component is much, much sharper. MV Arva spends a little bit of time up here during tops, ASOPA is much more reactive and more responsive. So it helps to really refine the model and bring it down to some more narrow elements whilst also giving us the unrealized, the realized, the mining across all these different sectors. We can see the pure multiple sits somewhere in between MVRV and, um, uh, and uh, ASOPA in terms of its responsiveness. And then the, pure, uh, the, uh, the reserve risk, sorry, um, this one here we've actually done as a reserve risk multiple, which means we've divided reserve risk by its yearly average, which brings it into a nice horizontal oscillator. Some of these we will put a bit of a transformation on just to kind of neaten up the data and make sure that the statistical models are actually going to work over the long period of time and smooth out some of that noise. But for all of these, we've essentially set up very, very similar deviation bands and then use those to try and identify when the market is in or out of bounds. So when we distill all of that down together, what we're basically looking for is out of those four metrics, how many of them are actually firing off at any one point in time. We've smoothed it over with a seven day moving average, which gives us that kind of um, a more of a signal type behavior. It's not immediate. So for example, to end up in these topping zones, what we're looking for is that it has to have all four metrics firing off over a couple of days. It's not an immediate thing. We're looking for that smoothing out the daily noise and these numbers can all be kind of adjusted and refined. If you are actually interested, you'll be able to jump into the workbench itself um, and actually make a copy and you can play around with some of the parameters if you choose. But really the goal is to try and find when are all of those four signals telling us a similar characteristic, what is that telling us about investor behavior? When are we seeing that start to tick in at the upside and the downside and overlaying it with a level of statistics to give us that extra confidence that there really is something going on here and it is out of bounds. Now, remember that the market is always going to be variable, even when we do combine these things into confluence and, and indicators that are telling us a similar story, absolutely anything can happen. So you have to remember that these things are never going to predict the future and there never will be an indicator that can. What we're trying to do here is look at the investor behavior, the actual behavior patterns that we typically see at these extremes, bringing them together and saying, do we have confluence across all of these things which have described these patterns in the past? Um, and then we are essentially applying that to what we're looking at at the moment. So um, as always, if you do have any questions on this, please do reach me in the comments. Let me know if you enjoy this particular type of uh, these types of models, because um, it does help uh, help our team really build out these things to help people understand what's going on within the world that is uh, quite confusing as it is. So thank you for tuning in for that session. Hopefully you found it useful. All of the dashboards, both the MV, RV, and this one you will find available for advanced members and you can start a free trial. There'll be a link in the description below. Um, please do let me know if you have any comments or questions, if you enjoy looking at and using tools like this to kind of bring the on-chain smarts together and, and try and distill it down to a tool that's a little bit more approachable than the individual metrics themselves. Please do let me know if you enjoy this type of content and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you then. Cheers.